Today is the day where at least one cylinder head is coming off. This has been a long time in the making. Okay, there it is. All right. This is a vehicle I'm selling and I want it to be reliable. I don't want it to blow up, you know, just a couple, couple thousand miles down the road. I am going to pull all the valves and collect all of these pieces, give them their, each one their own little bin. Okay, got that totally cleared out. Look at all that, just, just straight up dinosaur coming out of that. Be very careful, because when I release, there is nothing holding it on. Two of these keepers, one cap, and the spring itself. Really what's happening is twofold, is the valve guide is worn, but this here is not seating properly. This thing, I don't think was getting proper oil. Um, I'm curious to see what the actual oil pressure is once this is all back together. Yeah, so I think this is your exhaust escaping out. Okay, so I'll show you what we've got going on here. I've already done a couple of these. So, this is after, I did about 15 minutes each on the ultrasonic cleaner. This is a very mild solution. It, it's just water and simple green. That's because I do a lot of, what I clean in here is plastic. So I sacrificed it doing kind of a weaker job for knowing that I can throw anything in there and not have it get damaged. So these clean up quite a bit, uh, but not the, the baked on stuff is obviously still baked on. You can see kind of the crust here. And then this is going to get um, lapped in the in the cylinder head once I get, I'm borrowing the lapping kit from a friend, but. I went very methodically through this. So what I did is I took a bag and we've got five, Cylinder five intake, cylinder three intake. Uh, these are a little bit out of order, but I, in the interest of doing this and not mixing anything up, since so many parts are a mix and match on this that I've had to source, I've got this little very tightly knit basket. So this is great for washing hardware. But over the course of like two hours now, I have one by one rotated these, rotated these through. So got three exhaust, three intake, five intake, this I believe is, yes, five exhaust. So, okay, three exhaust, just a side-by-side -side comparison. Shouldn't get them mixed up, but hang with me for a second. So just in a side-by-side, -side, this isn't, you know, surgically clean, but as you can see here, it's got kind of a duller finish and it's a little bit, a little bit brightened up versus, we'll do it like this. So. There's still the baked on stuff, but the actual material stuff, or you know, the loose, wet aspect of it has gotten cleaned up significantly. Uh, that doesn't look that too different, that different. But this, I mean, I could sit here and scrub all day, but this allows me to basically leave it and forget it and just every 10 or 15 minutes come and rotate another one through. So the best, best bang for your buck for doing some passive work while I'm working on other stuff, but. Ultrasonic cleaners are wonderful. Very gross, but uh, wonderful. All right, recap for the day. This does not look much cleaner, but I did actually blow some carb cleaner through it. Some of these were actually packed up. I did. I got them cleared out, but that's not to say that they don't still have a bunch of schmutz packed. It's not to say I didn't just shove it from this chamber here down to somewhere in here, blocking passages. And these are really dirty. It, the whole thing really should get cleaned. But I'll have to say, I got it cleaner. This doesn't look dramatically different, but I did actually, well, okay, no, that does look much better. I just using Simple Green and you know some basic organic cleaning products, Simple Green, the totally awesome cleaner stuff, just in a big bucket full of water cleaning, scrubbing, flushing, cleaning, scrubbing, flushing. It is it is actually much nicer now. I'm going to do one more round of cleaning and see what it looks like after that. And that's probably going to be it. Mating surfaces of course will be surgically cleaned, so you know getting this this is actually pitting unfortunately, so I think that's below the surface. Either way, 
get this whole plane cleared out here and here. Uh, obviously get this flush for the head gasket. This is much cleaner. Um, these passages were all but plugged on the edge here and here. It's not all sparkly silver, but a lot of material has been cleaned out. Like the, you may remember these things were comp almost completely buried. All of these valve stem guides will be replaced. They're just, they're rock hard. Yeah, look, so this is, those are rock hard. And the replacement ones are silicone with a nice little, they're like blue silicone elastomer based, I think, with a retaining spring. So that's gonna be a nice improvement. So the heads, got all of these went through one pass, as I showed you at the ultrasonic cleaner. And they are cleaner significantly, but they're not, again, totally baked, shiny clean, but that's okay. I'm this, I am not worried about appearance on these. I just want to make sure they're all going to get a pretty thorough, thorough soaking of oil, uh, especially under the collet, because there's really no oil that flows there. And that's kind of the issue on why they got baked on before. But all eight have been done individually. It took a while, but again, the ultrasonic cleaner took care of it on its own time, just one by one, so I didn't mix any parts up. But those are practically done. What's going to happen next is uh, I've, I have to borrow some valve lapping compound from a friend, and then I've got a little trick which I'll show you guys on how I actually get this done. So what we're going to come back and do, so this is dry fit. That's really not too bad, actually, and especially once you get... It's actually kind of... That, that's really not too bad. You know, I am going to take those measurements, like I said before, but this is pretty, pretty acceptable yeah, for, for what it is. So what I'm going to do is you put valve lapping compound on this shoulder behind, and what you do is you press it flush. And there's a couple different ways. To, I actually have a trick I'll show you guys, but um, a lot of times you use a suction cup here, and you press it on, and using both hands, you just spin it. What I'm actually going to do, I take a, a piece of rubber hose that's, you know, just a little bit tighter. It's actually kind of sticking in there. That's actually good to see. It's a little bit narrower than the diameter of this. And I put it on the back, and using very, very light pressure, I actually put that hose in a drill. And I just kind of go... I First of all, you lube. You definitely lube the shaft. And then I just kind of spin. Get it. Go both ways. I do a very mild, I mean, I would err on the side of doing too little rather than too much, especially since these aren't visibly damaged. Just putting a new surface on. So, yeah, that's gonna be coming soon. Pretty good, I think, for just a half day, kind of splitting my time between a couple things. Um, nothing's done, which is kind of frustrating, but it's progress. It has to get done eventually, and I can do it now, or I can do it all later. So progress thanks guys hopefully you guys like the new camera i know i certainly do i can get a lot more in a shot and i think the quality is going to come out a little better one more thing to give you guys some context um oh actually you know what other camera would be perfect for this so that that plugged port i was talking about before it does actually go to a dead end so it's not as you can see here i mean of course it's a big mess now but there is no port where it returns. It's a dead end for oil. Um, I think this is actually backwards, isn't it? Seems to be, yeah. So this here is, is actually a dead end. All right, gang, so it's been a little a little bit, I think it's been a couple of weeks actually since I filmed last, just been jumping around between different things. 
What I ended up doing is I got this head. So this is the passenger side cylinder head. It is rebuilt. I checked the tolerances on, well, first of all, boy, where do I start here? So I'm not sure how well this will show up, but, um, well, first things first, between the two cylinder heads, I will show every step of this process. I was having some camera issues. Well, I switched to the GoPro. I was having some camera issues otherwise, and just running between things, just doing a little bit here, a little bit there. I was not as fastidious about filming as I would have liked to be. But what I ended up doing is I, I did, I cleaned the heads myself. They are good enough for who they are for, which is me. Um, they are, all of the debris has been cleaned. There is some staining and some, some finer stuff here that, that I could spend a lot more time getting off. But ultimately it was kind of a case of getting it 80% of the way clean took a certain amount of time. And to get it the additional 20% of the way clean would take the same amount of time or more. And ultimately, I, I, had to, I had to brush up the techniques that I used to clean the last one and kind of decide what was best and what was available to me in a short period for a certain price, that being not very much money or nothing. And so I am pretty happy with how this one... I'm happy enough with how this one turned out. I'm pretty confident that the other cylinder head... Uh, now that I freshened up my technique of doing it, um, the, what, like the manual parts, the automated parts using the ultrasonic cleaner and the, you know, the different chemicals to use to clean it up. Uh, I think the next one will go, I'll save a couple steps and it'll go much faster and I will be documenting that. But what we ended up doing is we pulled all of the valves. Valves came out and so each component part came out, got them all cleaned individually one by one. Um, I literally did, so we have eight valves here. I did this as one set. I did this as one set in the ultrasonic cleaner, each of them individually so I could match these parts up. Cause there's enough, there are gonna be enough mix and match parts on this just because of how it came to me. But I pulled each of these off and catalog, catalog them here, which I believe I did record. In doing that, once they were all bagged and tagged, <laughs> I would take them one by one into the ultrasonic cleaner, clean them, put them back in, take the next batch. Unfortunately, like the actual cleaning work took place, you know, I, I was able to automate that using the ultrasonic cleaner, but same thing with installation. I did them, oh, that's what I skipped. So in surfacing the valves, I used a little technique here. So what you do is this piece of rubber hose on a seven, <clears throat> excuse me, seven mil hex drive with a half or um, three eighths drive, my goodness, put, backwards, uh, or not backwards, from this side, I attach this to the valve. Like I said, I will be, who knows where this video will end up in what sequence, but I lapped the valves using a valve grinding compound and I put the valve grinding compound on the seat of this, make sure the shaft in the valve guide was lubed with a lot of oil. So I would actually, I had a bowl of oil set up and I would give, I would dunk them thoroughly feed them back in so there's a lot of lubrication, spin it from this side using the drill, and then put a little bit of pressure here just to kind of feel the, the grit and feel it getting smoother or harder or feel for variances and stop and reassess. I did that for each of these. Once again, I had the kit pulled out. I would pull one valve out, do it, match it to the valve it actually lived in, spin it, get it lapped, pull it out, get it th extremely clean, Let's get all the valve grinding compound out. Did that for every single one of these, all eight, and then put all of them away. And then I the, the final cleaning I did <clears throat> was putting, oops, slippery, putting the cylinder head in the ultrasonic cleaner um, one half at a time. I would stick one half in, flip it over, because this is, I have a big ultrasonic cleaner, but it's not this big. So stuck half in, flipped it over, stuck the other half in, flipped it over. And then once that was done, because the ultrasonic cleaner, like I can wipe off as much of the, the abrasive material in the lapping compound, but the ultrasonic cleaner will literally vibrate any loose material off of the surface. Uh, the stuff that's baked on needed something more aggressive, but that's the only way I was able to do it because you, what you're doing is you're putting an extremely tremendously abrasive material into this. And if you leave it there and it gets sucks into your oil passage, you may as well be pouring sand into your valve cover. So really soaked that in the ultrasonic cleaner, got it all out. Then I went back, put this on the bench, 
checked everything, made sure that it was a good in good condition to reassemble. Same thing, I filled that with oil. I just created an oil bath. And then piece by piece, using my valve compression tool over there, which I did record, I think you guys have already seen that, or you will have at some point in one of my videos. And comp you put the valve in from one side, and I got the valve completely top to bottom, the entire 100% of it. I soaked it in oil, so there's a, you know, a good film on it, and it was dripping. As you can see, all this oil was drip off, which is good. You want that. You can also use assembly lube, but since this isn't a new, since these are wider tolerances, since this is a used engine, I just use motor oil rather than um, assembly lube. But put the valve in, dunk the spring, give it a spin, seat it, give it a spin, put the put the, you know, dunk the cap in the oil, give it a spin, compress it, because you're, um, you need, you need the cap, this valve spring cap on it to compress using the valve compressor, compress it to a certain point, and then lubed, dunked each of these retaining, uh, what are they called? Call it, I think. Dunked each of those individually, got them really, you know, really sticky, got my finger, yes, yeah, see, getting oil already. Got them in there, seated, gave them a spin just to make sure they were flowing freely. And then release the tension on the valve spring compressor. Did that eight times all across it. Let it sit so the whole there's a good a film of oil on all the aluminum everywhere it dripped down. Um, and it's nice. I'm I'm. It's good to see some. You don't want a lot, but some oil came through that was sitting on these. Um, all that to say, I'm going to brake clean this surface. I checked it for trueness. I actually have a 24 inch machine straight edge, which I use for this and. I, um, brought it inside because you want to keep it in a climate controlled area. Trued this up with a straight edge and what I did was with the 24 inch fortunately it's it is longer than this so I did this diagonal this diagonal straight across here straight across the head bolts um, and then once this was a little little more oily what I actually did was I slid the whole th I, I had the straight edge and I just what angle did I use? I believe I had it like... Well, so this is before I put... No, actually, that was after I put the valves in. Um, I had it pretty much parallel with the workbench, and that was the easiest way to do it. But what I did is I put a light behind here, shined it up, and then I took my straight edge, and I took it from well, do this. all different angles. And what I did was look for clearance between the cylinders, just all the different areas, and I actually took a feeler gauge and fed it through. And I feel silly making this now because I'm going to do a better job of measuring that on the next cylinder head. So where we are now, I'm going to clean the surface of this, just meticulously clean. I already went through with my scrapers, and I very gently went to all the surfaces where there's material, where it wasn't just shiny aluminum, so the coolant ports, clean those up. Um, there's pretty much nothing on the oil ports, but did the same thing there across the cylinders, all the different areas, just until I had a nice smooth finish across them. Did the same thing over here on the actual surface. So there's all this rust staining from the coolant. Got that cleaned up, did the same thing here. The actual port is on this side, did that as well. And just for centering purposes, I put two of these studs in. That is the process that I'll actually film and give a little bit of background on now having unfortunately skipped some of that stuff prior. So I'll get you set up and I will go through that. All right, another item to note here. Let's see, I might have to zoom that in. Might not be close enough. Uh, especially on the coolant side, so this is a coolant passage here. There's some discoloration, uh, some sort of like calcium looking staining, which I believe is a very faint amount of coolant that was leaking in. Um, and that, and like I said, I couldn't find something that distinctly to me looked like a head gasket failure on this, but this little bit of, it really does kind of look like a calcium or, you know, like um, the residue that's left after water boils off, just some kind of white, white material left over here. I have gone over this entire thing with several different cleaning products and my straight edge and my steel scrapers which are much harder than, than the aluminum and what the what I just barely guide it over and I'm really just looking for resistance and in these areas that have discoloration there is no resistance there's nothing being shaved off so 
I'm going off of that in saying that it's okay. What you could do, and I don't feel comfortable doing, is take sandpaper and say, well, I want to get it down to bare aluminum. And that's basically what you would have, what it would look like if you ended up uh, decking the heads or decking the block, which are certainly not decking the block. But what, what the risk you run there of saying, oh, well, I want the colors to match, um, you are removing material past a certain point. And I'd rather have a little bit of discoloration that I can't feel. And your, your, your finger is a surprisingly good guide on detecting irregularities in surfaces. I feel nothing here, and I would rather say, well, this is a decked, you know, this is a machine surface, which doesn't have, I don't have reason to believe is itself damaged. If anything happens in these circumstances, it's generally the head that ends up failing. But same thing here, these this discoloration here, I did go over this for several minutes with my steel blade trying to pick up and shave off regularities, and I did not get any. So same thing here, I'm just tacking this up to discoloration rather than material being left. Like I can't, I feel nothing with my nail. And I, I'm going to leave it like that rather than just start sanding it to get that color off. And that is where I've left off on this. So this is a centering peg here and here for the head gasket itself. Um, all Each of these, of course, is a port where a head bolt would go in. I'm doing the head stud conversion. You have five, can I count? Yes, five tall ones here. This is, it's a, has a larger boss, uh, drilled boss in the cylinder head on the top side than you do on the lower. Uh, in fact, the lower piece will go over here so on the exhaust side, it's actually shallower right here. So if you get the ARP head stud kit, which I will show you right now, for the Rover V8, the ARP kit, which should cover, if, you're, if we're talking just Discovery 1s, this will cover a wide range of vehicles, but if we're just talking Land Rover Discoveries, 3.9 to 4.6 liter V8. That's going to be 94, 94 through 2004. ARP part number 157-4301. They come with their own kit. It is very similar. The torque pattern, I believe, is identical. The torques are different than the manufacturer. The manufacturer uh, is going through the procedure of a torque to yield bolt. I am adamant about following the OEM specs, but if you are buying an aftermarket upgraded product, follow the manufacturer's specifications. Very important. This is a different style of engagement than the OEM, so always use the owner's manual, or always use a shop manual, unless you are doing aftermarket work, in which case, follow theirs. And also, pick stuff from a quality manufacturer to make it simple on yourself. But, coming back here, there are two different different thread pitches, so both of these engage into the block. So on the tall ones here, which I'll get to in a second, you have a more coarse, I don't remember the exact ones, but you have a coarse thread for the block. You have a fine thread for the nut that comes from the top. There are two different lengths. The short ones, obviously that's not, that's not to scale, but the bottom, the exhaust side, it is short all across the board. One, two, three, four, five. On the, on beneath the valve cover, on the intake side, you have one short on the outside, another short on the opposite end, and you have three, remember, fine pitch up, three tall ones in the center. I believe that is because the water jacket comes up and through, uh, as I've shown before, but most engines, at least most engines I've encountered, will have oil ports and coolant ports between each cylinder, which is why a lot of times you'll have pretty uh, dramatic head gasket failures, but this actually pumps coolant over the top, through the cylinder head, and out on these two ports here. So for that reason, your, which ones is it? Yes. So as you can see, there's a lot more. So this is going into nowhere space. 
this is where they're going to seat in the block. And if you accidentally, you should find it pretty quickly, but if you use a short one, you're not going to be able to see the nut coming out the back. So long ones here. Now that I've run this through with the coarse thread in the block, if you look out the other side, you will have all of this thread or, you know, 90% of this thread showing, if not 100%. So there are going to be then presumably six long ones, I believe, in a full kit. Or six or 12. Either way, there's a, a smaller number of long head bolts. They go, these three, beneath the valve cover. Okay.